Hello artists! Welcome to Art Class. I'm Deanna and I'm here to inspire the artist in you to come out to play. No artistic talent is necessary, but a lot of, ta a lot of practice will do you good. Whatever you do artistically, professionally, or just for fun, being creative is good for all of us. Learning art skills can positively influence everything that you do. I'm a huge fan of continued education, but we don't always need to earn a degree, nor do we need to pay big tuition fees to get a quality education and develop exceptional skills. I welcome you here as part of your continued education. And if you're a young person joining us, you're also welcome. My mother put me into adult art classes when I was only eight years old, and I did just fine. Today's class starts off our drawing series, and I can think of no better way to fire up the artistic right side of the brain than quick sketching. We'll be using traditional artist materials in this series, and in today's class, we'll use paper, soft drawing pencils, and a blending tool. I'll tell you more about those in a minute. In regards to my teaching style, I will not show you how to make happy little clouds, nor how to draw anything specific step by step. There won't be any cookie cutter techniques that require you being told what to do next. I will teach you how to see. You need to learn how to see differently than most people naturally see, but it can be learned. If you can see it, you can draw it. That's important for you to develop your own artistic abilities. I'll show you how to use art materials. Some materials require technical know-how in order to perform well. And by completing the class assignments, you'll become empowered to create your own original artwork. So what is quick sketching and why are we starting with it? Quick sketches are messy little drawings that use just a few materials and are done with time constraints, as quickly as one minute but not more than five minutes. Quick sketches often appear a little wonky. They're not perfect, but their imperfections give them a lot of character. If you're new to drawing, this can help take some of the pressure off you as you learn this new skill. Quick sketches are simple and meant to capture the gesture and the essence of what you draw, not a detailed nor accurate representation. We'll create detailed and accurate drawings in future classes. Quick sketching is a great way to warm up and get you into artist mindset. You'll get through awkward stages of creativity much quicker if you first draw a series of quick sketches. Over time, the quality of all of your artwork will be improved by practicing quick sketching. Quick sketches can be completed artworks in themselves. Simple gestures that really capture the essence of something with a minimum of detail is a valuable artistic skill in itself. First we'll talk about drawing materials and then we'll get right into the three simple steps of quick sketching. Let's move over to the drawing board. You're going to need some materials. Obviously you need pencils, you need some paper to draw on, and also I've made two handouts for you. They're in the show notes. They're PDF files. You can print them off on your home printer and we can go over them together. The quick sketching handout we're gonna do in a few minutes, so let's put it aside. We'll start with the graphite worksheet. Now there's a materials list on this graphite worksheet. If you wanna go ahead and, and purchase all of these supplies you can but we don't need them all today we need some graphite pencils there's a graphite woodless pencil that's really great for quick sketching we need some blending stumps and we need some paper either a sketch pad or a ream of drawing paper loose paper so there is more than one scale explaining the different kinds of graphite that's available and this one, this one is perhaps a, a simple one that will help you understand what we're dealing with when it comes to art pencils. Everyone is familiar with this yellow pencil that has the orange eraser on the end. We call that a number two pencil and it's also referred to as an HB pencil which happens to be right in the middle of this scale between hard and soft graphite. Now, the hard pencils are 
um, really great for technical drawing. They make a very light line, they keep a very sharp point, and you can do skinny, very detailed work. The B uh, graphites, which B stands for black, by the way, uh, the B graphites are very soft and they make very dark lines and put a lot of graphite on the paper. And these are the ones that are really great for quick sketching. So we're going to focus on the B pencils. We have on my table here a 2B pencil, a 4B pencil, a 6B, an 8B, and I also have some 9B woodless pencils. So let's talk first about um, why we're not using H. This is an H, 2H actually, right here. This is a 2H pencil. See that skinny line? It creates very thin lines, and this is okay for quick sketching, but actually we have other options that are better, so just make some lines here to practice so we can see how they behave. I like to use this kind of pencil when I'm cutting custom mats for framing artwork, so I keep this around, but otherwise I don't use it very often for the kind of work that I do. Now you can see I've got several different brands here and you may be wondering, oh, how am I gonna choose which brand? I do have some favorites. I'll tell you which ones those are and why the other ones are not my favorite. So this is a 2B pencil here and it's General's brand. I believe that General's is the house brand for Michael's. Michael's, you know, where you buy craft supplies. I also have Sanford. This is a, a okay pencil. A Stabler is a great pencil and Faber-Castell is a great pencil. Pencil. I have other kinds too. Here's one. Uh, I shaved the um, name off so I have no idea what it is but I love this pencil. Um, the reason that I don't really care for this particular Sanford and I don't care for the generals as much is that the B graphites are so soft that they're better served if they have a really thick lead. Can you see the difference between say that pencil graphite? Let's move it on the white and this one, this one is much thicker inside the wood. This is gonna last a little longer while you're using it. It doesn't wear down quite as fast. It doesn't break quite as easily. And this one, this pencil is gonna be need, uh, needing sharpening quite a bit more frequently. So let's go through these 2B, 4B, 6B and see the difference between the lines. So here's our 2B right here. I'm gonna make some lines, some zigzags and some swirls. You can see they're getting a little bit darker now I've got a 4B right here. See how much darker that's getting. 6B, now this is the kind of pencil I really love for quick sketching. I'm hardly pushing at all, and look how bold and, and dark that line is. Here's the 8B pencil, much darker, much bolder. It's bolder because that graphite tip wears down a lot faster and it makes a thicker line. And last but not least is the 9B graphite pencils that are woodless. I keep them in the tube to prevent them from breaking. And watch this, super dark, super bold. And there is one more difference here that you'll see. And that is when I take my finger, that graphite moves around really easily. Over here, not quite so much. For quick sketching, we wanna be able to move that graphite around really easily. Okay, so in quick sketching, we're going to keep our tones limited. And the reason we're doing that is because we're moving so fast, we don't have time to create a whole range of, of uh, tones in this one medium. So if I take an 8B pencil and fill in this first square, not pressing very hard, you can even see some shavings coming off here, not shavings, some dust coming off. It's really easy to get that really dark black. If I press lighter, I can get a lighter tone. And we haven't talked yet about blending materials, but if I take this blending material, this stump, and just kind of smear the graphite a little bit, now I've got some on this stump, and I can make a third tone, a nice light gray tone and the fourth tone is just the white of the paper so we're going to be using all four of those tones to make these quick sketches. Oh, there's several different ways to blend but let's talk about this one first. This is the most useful one for quick sketches. It comes in some other sizes too. I don't find these quite as useful. This one's okay. This is too small for quick sketches. 
tortillions are another kind of blending tool. They're hollow, they have a much longer point and um, they're made for doing really fine detail. Remember quick sketches, not so much detail, not so many tones, we want to keep it simple. Also we have a Q-tip, Q-tips work pretty well here for picking up some dust and they blend fine. The only issue with them is they sort of fall apart. You could also use your finger, but the oils from your hands can get into your painting, your drawing, your sketch, excuse me, um, and make things kind of muddy. So it's not your best option. Here's your best option. If you can get yourself one of these, great. So let me show you how easily you can make an image with just graphite. Let's draw something that looks a bit like a sphere. And let's say that is the most darkest part of this object. I take the stump, smear it a little bit now. I've got another tone in there. I can press lighter and get an even lighter tone. And I can easily drop a shadow in here. And of course you can go back and put more detail in there if you want, but quick sketches are done so quickly, not much detail. The soft B pencils need to be sharpened pretty regularly. So let's talk about keeping these pencils sharp. Now, the first option is to use one of these standard pencil sharpeners. I don't really like this option because the angle that it cuts is so shallow that only just a little bit of the graphite is exposed. And so it's not my first choice. Look at the difference between an electric sharpener and this little hand sharpener. Of course, this you can take with you when you're out away from your studio. The electric sharpener, unless it's battery operated, it's not quite so um, portable, but it does make a much longer um, cut and then more graphite is exposed. So this is my personal favorite choice. And you also have another choice and that's a little knife. Now this is not a good option for children, but if you're an adult and you feel confident in your skills, just get your hands nice and steady and use your thumbs to hold that blade in place and just start shaving away the wood. You can get a nice long bit of graphite exposed. Try not to shave the actual graphite, just shave the wood and that's a great option too. You may have noticed that I did not mention any erasers for quick sketching and that's on purpose. In quick sketching we're moving so quickly there really isn't time to reach for an eraser to make a correction. So if you've got erasers I'm going to encourage you to put them away and just let the quick sketching be what it is without corrections. There are a couple of ways to get it back on track if you notice that your drawing is kind of going wonky. But remember that in quick sketching, a little wonky really adds character. So just leave those mistakes in there and, and let them be part of the quick sketch, the charm of quick sketching. So I've got a 6B pencil here and in the first section with this stork, it says 4B, 6B or 8B graphite pencil. So some nice soft pencils will be great and I've also got a blending tool. Okay, in the first step, you're going to just isolate the basic shapes of the object. Here there's a circle, a long oval, a long triangle, and of course the big oval for the body. Do this very quickly within 10 seconds, not more than that, and all you're doing is just sort of plotting out proportions of this object. And if the proportions are wrong, they're going to be wrong over here. Don't worry about it. In quick sketching, we just do the best that we can. And the point is to just keep moving. Move on to another sketch. Repeat the same thing if your proportion wasn't right. Uh, do the, you know, the same image more than once. That's just fine. But keep moving. Keep it quick. Keep it short. No erasers. Light lines to start with plot in those proportions, then move on to the next section. This should take about 20 seconds, and what you're doing is drawing the contour around this object. All the little details in here that you can do very quickly. Also, there's some contour inside the object that can be done, so here that's what I've done. The outside edge of the object is called the contour, draw in the contour. 20 seconds, move on. The last section is where you put in some tone. So I'm using a soft pencil. It's easy to get these darks in here. Scribble pretty quickly, drop the pencil, grab your blending tool, and make those lighter tones with your stump. 
and that's it. A minute and a half, two minutes tops to do this sketch. Now it isn't perfect, that's the point. Quick sketching is just a little less perfect, but surprisingly, these imperfect drawings will create more and more perfect drawings in the future. So let's get started doing some quick sketches. We need some paper to draw on, and I like to use uh, sketchbooks. This is a Canson brand sketchbook that I put a cover on to make it my own. And I recommend that you draw only on one side of the paper. Graphite, especially in the bees, are so soft that they smear pretty easily and they transfer to the back side, especially if you were to draw on this side, then this image is going to just transfer to the left hand side. So um, this one I like to do in the morning while I'm drinking coffee, so I end up with a lot of pictures of my dog. And um, it's a great way for me to warm up in the morning. Um, we can also just use a paper that comes in a ream as long as it's nice and heavy and it's got a little bit of a tooth surface that the graphite likes to cling to. So our first sketch that we're doing is bird and I really like to do birds. I like to do birds in real life too because they move so quickly that they make my hands move faster. So today we're going to be using a photograph because it's still and it's easy for us to talk about. I've got a 6B pencil and I've got my blending, blending stump. And remember the first step is to just lightly plot out the basic shapes of this so that we get the proportions right. So just lightly plot out. Now I might not get my proportions right. Remember in quick sketching, it doesn't really matter quite so much. A little wonky adds character. There it is. And maybe a little beak in here. Okay, the next step moving on is the contour. So that's this outside edge. Here I'm going to spend a little bit more time doing that because it adds a lot of character. Now I draw better if I'm not talking because drawing engages the right side of the brain and talking is the left side of the brain. So I'm going to shut my mouth. There we go, that's it. I'll do a little bit of contour on the inside just to define where those really dark sections are on the wings. Okay, maybe an eye right about there. The next step after that is to start plotting in some values. So pressing pretty hard with this nice 6B pencil, going after the very, very darkest parts first. Okay, I put the pencil down, pick up the blending tool. See, that was about 20 seconds or so. Nah, I didn't time it. Okay, I'm going after the darkest parts first and I'm smearing around some of that graphite. This is creating some volume in this object. And that's it. There's our first sketch. Good job, let's move on. Got another image here of a nice golden retriever. And I'm gonna do him down here. Now this reminds me that sometimes people are really intimidated by a blank piece of paper. And if you find yourself in that kind of position, sign your name first, put the date here, do a, you know scribbles. It doesn't really matter, just make the paper not so white anymore. I'm gonna push the paper up a little bit so I've got these more side by side. You can see them a little easier. Okay, he's got a nice oval head. His snout is an oval also. Some ovals for his nose and some half ovals in here. Triangles, let's get going. I can hear a studio dog on the other side of the door. Okay, eyes are maybe here. I'm letting these images overlap a little bit. Doesn't really matter. Okay, he's plotted out, let's move on. Now my proportions might not be right, and that means that the end product is not gonna be perfect. But remember, finished is better than perfect not finished. Let's do it. Contour, starting over here. I'm capturing some of that fun fur.
This contour of the ears goes inside as well. about it. Next step is to darken in some value, pressing pretty firmly with the pencil. Look for the darkest darks first, so maybe this nose could use some dark, dark. The eyes are pretty dark. It's dark over here. The blender's gonna become really useful for that part. Okay, done. Put the pencil down, move on to the blender. Grab these darks first. I'm pressing pretty hard and moving pretty quickly. done. Okay, it's time for you to start sketching. Please do lots and lots of sketches. Don't get caught up in perfectionism. Next week, challenge yourself. Have 20 of these. Have 50 of these. Draw anything that you want. Draw what's in front of you. Draw photographs. Draw off your computer monitor. Draw, go to the zoo and draw the animals at the zoo. I love doing that. And have yourself some fun. Next week, we're going to be talking about some of this line quality. So we'll do a little reflection back on the work that you've done. It'll be self-reflection. You can just look at it yourself and I'll point out some things to look for. We talked about the soft B pencils that are ideal for quick sketching, a blending tool and paper, and also there's the two PDF hand handouts that you can download from the show notes below. And now you know about the three steps to create quick sketches, the basic shapes, the contour, and the four tones. Remember that quick sketches are only about capturing the gesture and the essence of what you draw. If you start to feel overwhelmed, you might be forgetting about the three steps. Look again at the quick sketch handout and keep it simple and quick. You know that you can use anything as your subject matter. Draw what's in front of you in real life or draw from photographs. If you feel confident drawing the human figure or human faces, quick sketches are great for that. Drawing humans is exactly the same as drawing anything else. However, sometimes our brains get in the way and cause confusion. No worries about that now. We'll learn some very helpful guidelines to bypassing that brain confusion in future lessons. Choose easy for now and meet challenges as you're ready. If you like today's class, please click the thumbs up button on this video. And I invite you to become an official student in art class by clicking on the red subscribe button below. You'll be able to find us in your subscriptions folder. And if you click on the bell, you'll be notified when the newest video is released. We meet once a week. I would love to hear from you. Please reach out and stay in contact with me. Post questions, comments, and suggestions in the comment section below, or you could just introduce yourself and say why you're here in art class. Have fun quick sketching. I'm Deanna, see you next week in art class.